Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at the Science Olympiad plugin for the 2021 season. Now this year we're going to be building bridges, so you can see here a sample bridge that I've created. And your bridge is going to need to hold a certain amount of area loads and point loads. So there'll be one area load up here that will be compulsory, and then there'll be a few others that are dependent on your competition's rules. You'll also need to put a point load at each corner of this area load and it needs to act in the positive Z direction. Now let's go up here and have a look at the add-in this year. You can see it's changed a little bit, but what you can do is pick your division, so middle or high school, and then you can create a template with that because there will be a different template for each of these divisions. And then you can run the test on your structure to see that it complies with all the rules. Now the rules can be found down here and some instructions here as well. So if we have a look at the rules, have a good read of these and get familiar because they're very important to your competition. And if we go over to this link here, you can see that students can get uh, a subscription to SkySiv for eight months for $50. So this is a very discounted rate for the Science Olympiad students. So this should last you for the full season and allow you to use the software as you need to. So let's start by creating a new model and we're going to open up the plugin here and I'm just going to go with the high school scenario and press create template and it will check that I want to replace whatever's on the canvas already. Now if we close this you'll see that we have an area load with some members and also some supports. Now we can just pretend that we're crossing a river here. So we're going to need to have at least one other, uh, one other area load and some point loads. And then we're going to need to put our bridge in here. Now these supports, there must be two on the positive side of this X coordinate this, that you see here, 0 0.225. And there also must be two on the negative side of 0 0.225 along the X axis. So these comply as they are. If you'd like to spread them further apart, you can do that but you can't raise them in the Y, otherwise it won't comply with the requirements for the competition. So let's start just by creating a bit of structure here. And what I'll do is I'm going to use this tool here and I can just drag members between nodes. Now I'm just going to select this member and right click it and use split and split it right in the middle so that we have a node to work with here. Now what you might like to do is select this node and I'm going to press Control D to use the repeat tool. And you can find that in your operations as well up in the top menu. And we're going to take this node and move it in the positive Y direction. And we'll just go up by 0 0.1 and repeat once. And I'm also just going to connect the node with a member because I'll be doing this anyway. And now we've just got sort of like a king post for a truss. So let's take this and just connect here to complete the truss. Now I'm just going to hold control and highlight these two. And then I can also split these to create some nodes in the middle. And then I can just put in some web members. So let's go from there to there and there to the midpoint. So now we've got a basic truss, you might like to just turn on 3D mode so you can get a feel for how uh, thick your sections are. And they're not too thick, considering that this is all that's going to be in our structure. It's not as busy as this one. We might need some stronger members. So let's just go over to sections. We'll go to the section builder. You can choose the section you want to adjust. And in dimensions, instead of having five by five, I'm just going to increase this to 10 by 10. Now the minimum your sections can be for the competition are 1.5 millimeters squared. So once I've put those two in, I'll press submit. So now our truss is looking a little bit more heavy duty. Let's hold down control and drag from left to right to select everything that we intercept. And then I'm going to do control D again. And this time we're going to go in the negative Z and I'm going to move it 0.2 meters because this is the distance between the template supports. We'll do one repetition and press go. 
And now you see that we get two trusses. Now, if we undo this and just run that again, we can actually toggle the selection to allow us to connect the nodes to the other truss. So let's just select that again. We'll go in the negative Z and we're going to go 0.2, press submit. There you go. And now our truss is connected. So let's just create another section to infill a few braces. So let's go to sections and we'll do new. And this one can be light, medium or heavy. These are default materials that we've loaded for you. So let's go into the builder and we'll just create another shape like the one we saw before. So I'm just going to use a template and do a rectangular. And I'm just going to do five by five, which is the one that we started with. And this will just be a little lighter on the structure. So now if we just sort of think about what's going to happen to our structure here, we're going to have some horizontal point loads up here. So we're probably going to need some bracing in this direction as well. So let's just take this node down here and put a brace up to here. Now, if you're having troubles getting to that node, that could be because three days on. So let's just turn that off and run it again. So now we've sort of got a bracing member in between there. You might also like to add some in the plane of the pitch. So I'm just going to go from here to here. And also on the other side here. And then we're just going to connect this one right to the apex. And then we'll go back down on the other side as well. All right, so we've got a pretty decent looking bridge. We can open up the renderer to have a better look at it. And let's now start connecting this load down to the structure itself. Now, this is going to be a little bit messy for your project. I hope you can come up with a bit of a better solution than what I'm doing right here. I'm just going to directly connect these down to those nodes. Now, this is going to put a bit of stress on these connections here, no doubt. So let's just take these and connect them down as well. Take that one over there, down here, and the last one to here. And now it's sort of sitting up on top. Let's add some point loads to that area load. So let's start running this in the test just to see what sort of errors it gives us. And you can see here, it says that there should be two to four area loads. Now this is dependent on your competition. So make sure you check with the supervisors what you should have. And what I'm going to do here is just hold control and actually, if I go right to left, then it'll only select the things that are inside this box. So those nodes, let's go to point loads. And if we just double click this here, it'll bring those nodes in and we can then apply a Z magnitude of five Newtons, so 0 0.005. And for the competitions, this will be anywhere between five Newtons and 25 Newtons, which would look like this. So let's just leave this at five Newtons and press apply and you'll see that the four point loads get applied. Now, we also saw that we needed two area loads. So let's just turn off the loads there. And I'm going to select these members here and also these ones here. And I'm just going to duplicate them across in the positive X direction. So Control D, positive X, and we'll just go 0 0.1. Press submit, and now we've got another frame here. If we turn the loads back on, you'll see that there's no loads here. So let's just grab the nodes and go into the area loads section. And we can just double click in here or we'll press that button and that'll bring our nodes in. Now you need to make sure that these go in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. So we have 17, 18, 19, 20 and it goes in that direction, which is good. The pressures should be minus 60 kPa for the competition. And if they're not, then when you run the test, it will automatically change them for you. So just to test that, let's put in 30, press apply. So now we've got two area loads. We're just gonna need to connect this area load to the structure as well. So let's just drag some members down to say this one. And we'll bring this one down here. And we'll just bring these two across. Now, this isn't a very strong structure here. We're just connecting it. 
for the sake of the demonstration. So it's important to understand that these members by default have full fixity on either end. And this means that they sort of act as one with the next member. Whereas in real life, a lot of these members probably would be modeled as a pin. And this will also reduce your bending and other sort of stresses in your members. Now we've got that connected. And the only reason that this here won't collapse is because these members are fixed. We can now run our plugin again. And the next area is that area loads should only be a two-way type. Now I'm sure that I didn't do that. So let's go back over here. But you can see that it's changed this. So in here, this should be two-way. Press apply. And now if we go back into the add-in and try again, you'll see that it runs. So once it solves, it'll calculate a few things and come up with a score. Now we got 318, it's not very high, but it tells you where the failing member was or the worst case. So here we can see that we had combined stress in member 11. So if we have a look at member 11, which is just here, you can probably see that it would be getting quite a lot of force coming down these struts and into it. You can actually run the solve to have a better look. And you can just ignore these reasonable input checks. Because we're dealing with such a small structure, obviously our structure is not very reasonable. So we'll just leave them and run the solve anyway. And you can come into here and probably a nicer way to see all the stress is just by going through here and choosing member stresses. So you can go through and have a look at the different ones, maybe axial. So you can see that the axial is very high in that member 11 that we were looking at. So we could look at ways to prevent this member getting so much force in it and then revise our structure. Now, another thing here is that all of these sections, remember how we had a five by five section? Well, they look like they're all 10 by 10. So we might be able to go back into our model and just choose a few members that should have just the smaller section here, section two, and you could apply it to them. So if we just turn that off and grab all of these, maybe these should all just be section two. And this will make our model a lot lighter. So if we run this again, we can see that we had three, 318. I'm guessing that member 11 is still going to be the worst case, but you can see our score went up because our structure got lighter. So you can just keep playing with that and sort of revising your structure so that when you turn on competition mode, you can build that model again and submit it for a better score. Now up here, you can find the competition mode button. And when you flick this on, it will put you into competition mode for 48 hours. So this means that you will get less feedback when you test the structure, such as the score, and you will actually be able to submit your structure with the score. So if we turn this on, you then need to run the test again. And then once you've run your test, you can get this information, but you'll just submit this and you can choose your event, fill in your details here and press submit. And that's it for the plugin. So if you need any more help, you can find a bit more information in the documentation, or you can always come down to Intercom here and talk to us in the live chat. So good luck with the competition, and we're looking really forward to seeing some of the structures that you all come up with. See you later.